All right, welcome to part four. Well, we're working on the OCR uh, Kata from the Kata Bank. The link is on the blog post. Um, the last part, what we did is we made every account digit in an account number aware of its position and added a property that computed the checksum weight, which was just the digit's position in the account number, where an account digit's position is defined by how far to the right in the account number it is. So the rightmost digit in the account number has position one and so on going to the left. Now we wanted to do this because every digit again has a weighting which is which depends upon its position and that comes into play when we actually go to compute the checksum on an account number. So having said all that, again we left off having done all that, we need to go on now to the checksum calculation. Uh, looking at our object model, we have an account digit and we have an entry where an entry is the actual text. So let's look at that class again, let's refresh our memory, myself included. Uh, an entry takes a list of string, which, as you can, going back to the problem description, was the four lines that represents an account number. Um, and then we break that out into individual digits. Now, what I'm noticing is that we don't have an account number. But actually, here in the entry, we do. So the entry actually spits back a list of, a, has a method that spits back a list of account digits, which is the account number as the text. So the problem here is that we have a checksum. And a checksum belongs on the account number. It doesn't really belong on the entry because the entry is the text. It doesn't belong on a digit because the digit is just a bunch of digits. So it seems like we need to introduce a new class to represent, um, to represent our account number. Uh, we've been getting away with not having to do this, but it looks like we finally have to pay the piper for that. So we're going to go ahead and add that class. Now, test-driven development says we write a test first, but we're not zealots in this case, so we are just going to add an account number class and then add the, approach, the uh, corresponding test class. And we're not going to go crazy with that. So we're just going to set it up. I hate that feature. I will fix that, I promise. A test fixture. Now our first test, again, just to kind of get the ball rolling here, I would normally start off with an inst can instantiate kind of test. Um, we have to ask ourselves, what is an account number? Account number is really just a list of account digits. So we will do that over here in the class. Um, There. And let's clean up our namespace declarations. So to make this clear, we will write a test just to instantiate this little thing, kind of trivial, but you know, sometimes trivial tests help us form and shape our solution. Just recently reinstalled Dev Express. That's why all those I usually turn all that crap off. So I do apologize. Is equal to new account number. Now, my question is, do I really care at this point? Because we can have an empty list. So we're gonna have an empty list here. This is most probably gonna be a test that I delete, but it gives me a warm fuzzy inside knowing that I can instantiate this guy now. The funny thing is here that we don't even really need to pass in a list of stuff because we can write the computation of the checksum right away. So what we're going to do, since this account number has no restrictions and whatnot, I know the problem says that an account number has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine digits so we can build all that validation later but I'm going to get to the meat of the problem right now which is uh, we want to be able to calculate the checksum correctly um, we want to be able to calculate we want to be able to tell if a checksum is valid um, when that gives us two tests right there so first off let's just see if we can calculate the checksum so we're going to instantiate a new account number now here's the interesting thing right we are calculating this checksum, but we know that since this is this account number is empty, it's really not a number, the checksum will be zero. 
because it has no digits. King calc. So we're going to go ahead and write the test for that edge case. And we're going to rename the test so it actually expresses what we want to capture, which is checksum for empty account number. Oh my goodness. Now the test name actually tells us what we're trying to do. Obviously, we're going to break here, so let's go ahead and declare the property. And we don't want to back in store. We want to get. I'm going to just write the simplest case right there. And then we have a pass. Now. So this actual this testing is actually misleading because if it's evenly divisible by 11, it'll be zero. So let's rename it, check some for non-empty account number not divisible by 11. Now that's one hell of a name right there, I know, but let's leave it that let's leave it like that for now. Check some and actually, you know what? We can Remove account number since the context tells us that we're testing account numbers. So checksum for non-empty, not divisible by 11 is greater than zero test. There we go. Nice and easy. How do we get something like that, right? Well, we just need to pass it in digits. So I'm going to pass in a new account digit. And again, how do we compute the checksum? The checksum is basically just the digit times the weighting, all added together. So all I have to do then is instantiate this account number with one digit whose position, say, is equal to one, but then we also need the value. So I was hoping that I could get away from actually having to spin up an account digit with an actual value in it. But unfortunately, I don't think I can do that. So let's see what account digit takes as in the constructor. All right, so there's our account digit. Our constructor basically just spins up that dictionary that lets us convert from, from a string to an actual number. And what we have is that it looks like we're gonna, we, can't, we can't spin up a digit without actually passing in the string representation of what we want that digit to be. Because otherwise, we, there, we have no method. We have no way of being able to mock out the fact that um, this digit is three or this digit is four. That said, we actually could mock this if we wanted to, but we're going to leave it simple for now and not. So instead of mocking, we're going to copy and paste. If this guy is in position one, he can be any one of these numbers, any one of these numbers here, one to nine, and still not be divisible by 11. So we're just going to pick, to make it interesting, we'll pick six. Funny, right? Looking at this right now, I'm wondering, I'm asking myself why I declare this as a list of string. It really should just be the account digit itself should just be a string. And I bet you I declared it as a list of string because I started out as this with this being actually an account number. But we will fix that as we go. That's what test driven development lets us do. Fix stuff like that. But let's stay focused. So We want this account number to be a new account digit. The position is equal to one. And as you see, we have no property for the actual text because it is a list, which is kind of klutzy, isn't it? I'm really rearing to refactor this right now. So let's not. Let's just get this computation and then cut this segment short. We'll refactor it in the next one. Position is equal to one. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and add the string representation. And unfortunately, it's not going to let me do that. 
Right. Okay. So we can't get that fancy, unfortunately. So let's go ahead and just declare a new account digit up here. Make a position one, and then add this guy in. So there we go. Position equals one. We've added string representation of six, and then we're going to instantiate or initialize our new account number with this digit. I don't need to be on multiple lines because there's enough space on one line. And I'll put this guy here. A little cleaner. Okay, so we've added a new account. We've created a new account number with a digit of, I believe I said six, right? In the position of one. So our checksum will be six modulo 11, which will be six This obviously won't work because we're returning zero every time. That's good. We're gonna go back to the account number. And here is where we have the fun. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna iterate over ourselves. track of what we just typed, the sum of digits and weightings. That is an integer. Check some weight. We'll put that on a separate line here. And we'll make that terribly clear. And then we return it modulo 11. And now we're here. This should equal 6. And it does. So there's our simple calculation. All we've done is we are iterating over every digit in the account number and summing up, and I did something wrong there as you can see, because it is, no, we did it right, we did it right. The checksum weight is based on the position. So the position is implicit in the digit. And so we're multiplying the checksum weight times the actual digit itself. And accumulating that sum and then taking modulo 11 and that's our checksum. So we were able to correctly calculate that for something that's not divisible by 11. So in the next segment we'll continue. We will write the test that allows us to compute or that shows that we can compute a checksum for a account number that has this formula divisible by 11 and that will be it. And then we'll go back and we'll clean up some of our object definitions. Hope you enjoyed it. Look, look, I'll talk to you next time.